Hey guys, so today I started work on my new game, which is about, uh, I, I wrote Source Game here, but it's about making tacos, and Source is definitely going to be one of the key mechanics, which I've started started implementing today. So I'm building it in Godot, and I do expect it will be available on the PS5. Now, the first thing that I had to do was actually to um, build a main menu screen just to like get to know Godot and stuff because I've, I've never really built a game in this before, but it seemed pretty good and, and I built a, a nice looking title screen. Now, for one of the main mechanics of this game, you're going to have to design, well, this isn't really a main mechanic, but it's still very important. You're going to have to design recipes for tacos. Okay, so you're going to have like all these different dispensers. You can imagine they're kind of lined up along the roof and you can slide them over or whatever. Like these can these can slide back and forth. Okay, and so the different dispenses will be for different things and they will all be different sources. For example, this would be like the salsa source can come out here. Um, um, you'd slide it into the middle first so that it, it lands inside the taco, which would be like down here. You have your taco kind of thing. Whatever I don't know. There's a taco there. So you you so you have your salsa, and for example, you might have also like this one could be the cheese source that is, and also like the the meat source or whatever. Okay, and so you're gonna have to like m put these things together. And so I'm gonna so one of the big things that I was looking forward to doing, which I I started doing today, is to simulate how um the sources are gonna land inside of this inside of this and how they're going to move around, how they're going to stack in the tarko, how they're going to interact, how they're going to collide. So it was a bit of a, a bit of a physics problem, a bit of a physics simulation. So for whatever reason, I didn't really do any research at all. I just didn't really care. And so I decided on my own model for how the source is going to work. So one um, continuous string of source, I'm going to model it like a bunch of balls along a string. Okay, and so the balls are like actual particles that experience forces, and the strings are straight lines that connect the balls. So we know that every one of them is going to be experiencing gravity, it's going to be falling down, and we should expect that every, every string is also going to be pulling both ways on each of the balls, right, by the same amount. There's some, some amount of tension in the string which is going to pull the balls, and I'm going to, you know, by Hooke's Law or whatever, or just intuition, we know that that force is going to be bigger if they're being stretched further apart. So we should get this kind of, this kind of motion just from that idea. So after writing like a whole bunch of prelimin preliminary code and all of that kind of thing, so after I did that, I started, I started implementing um, these, these forces between the particles. And once I worked out how to like use Godot and write in GDScript, which is a program programming language that I've never really, really used to any extent before. And so once I worked that out, it, it wasn't too difficult to get the forces acting on the different, on the different beads in the chain or the different source nodes, as I like to call them. Okay. And so we have, so I got, got it happening and without any collisions happening, it kind of looks like I've just got two, two nodes here it kind of looks like they're orbiting each other or something like that. And you can see it with or or without the um, string connecting in between. But it kind of looks like they're orbiting each other. But I want to I wanna be clear, like this is completely in 2D. There's nothing 3D going on here. It's just, the, it's just the accelerations are just pulling them together, pulling them past each other, pulling them back in. Another thing I exp experimented with is something I called velocity dampening, which is... Uh, you can see it here. They kind of slow down naturally over time and kind of come to rest. I, I, I didn't end up using that, or I don't know if I'll reintroduce that, but I thought it was interesting. Okay, so in this next in this next one, you can see, like, I've introduced the basics of collisions, and this actually took a really long time. This probably took the longest of anything that I did today. And the reason it takes a long time, okay, so... What I originally wanted to do with the collisions is I wanted to say, okay, so we have we have some circles, some amount of circles that are overlapping. And if we have two circles overlapping, the problem is pretty simple to work out what should happen. Okay, so I want to take two overlapping circles, say they collided, they would be overlapping, and then move them back so that they're just tangent, so that they're just touching. 
right? So they're no, lo no longer colliding. And that's not that hard. I can do a little bit of maths to work out how far each circle needs to be moved and in what direction each of them be moved. And with vectors, that's super easy. So that's not that hard. But once you have three or more circles in this problem, and this is going to become a very messy page, okay, this becomes uh, nearly impossible, I guess. I guess it's like an NP problem. You can't really you can't really solve it with like a uh, in a closed form. There's no simple algorithm to solve this. So what I ended up having to do was like taking, you know, a few circles that are overlapping. And then what I did is I went through every pair of overlapping circles. And then when they were overlapping, I said, OK, so we're going to move them apart just a little bit, not the whole way. Right. And then I went to the next pair of over overlapping circles and I said, okay, we're going to move these ones apart a little bit and then to the next pair and the next pair and the next pair. And so I kept doing this and I kept doing this, okay, because I needed some form of collisions, you know, it doesn't need to be full collisions. Source can kind of op overlap with itself, but I went to each pair and so I moved them apart a little bit. And then when I go to the end, I said, okay, and now we'll go back and repeat. We'll move them all apart a little bit more. And if I ever got to any stage where no circles were overlapping, Okay, I said, okay, well, we're finished as far as that's concerned. There's no circles overlapping anymore, and that's all good. But, um, so yeah, so we just we just kind of go through and we just iterate. We don't we do it. I think I've got it set to six or seven times, and it just pushes them apart about that much. Okay, so the next step was to have like a floor that the circles could land on, right? And so the first way that I did this was, as you can see, it was not a very successful implementation but essentially we just had if a circle was below okay then it's going to get teleported above so it's just touching all right and that was okay to start off with except you know you see what it you see what it does and the reason one of the big reasons is that the collision detection between the individual circles has to take place after the collision detection with the floor for reasons if you think about it you might be able to see why that is okay so then they would like collide with each other and then they would be forced back through the floor and you see all this weird stuff that's going on. So what I had to do is make an exception if a circle was on the floor and it collided with another circle like this. Okay, so we only pick the circle that's not on the floor and we only move that one back instead of moving both circles back like we normally do when I'm doing collision detection. Okay, and so that was the first part of solving the problem and then it still was not so good so... What I had to do, I changed it so that um, only once a circle is on the floor, it can't move at all. It no longer moves at all. They just get fixed to the floor. Basically, the source is just sticking to the tarco, which which is pretty good as far as I can as far as I can tell. Pretty accurate. Okay, so the last thing that I did was I just added like we've only had two source nodes, and you can imagine real source must be composed of lots of source nodes you would think okay and i thought this as well so i started adding a few more and i just played around with their initial parameters as and i mean not initial none of them had any initial velocity okay it's just gravity that and and the tensions between them that gets them moving and so i just played around with their initial positions and we got a few different setups and i think overall it looks pretty good and especially once we have different types of source landing on each other different strings of source all going together, I definitely think that will be delicious for our customers. I have a lot of really big plans for this game, so hopefully you guys will stick around and keep watching, and eventually I'll give it to you for free because it's just a project that I'm doing. I don't want money for this.